I'll be real brief, so listen quickly. I've got phone calls and um, subtle little threats in the last few days like never before. Started out kind of nice, but now in the last several days it's got to the place where I've If you ever pray for it to snow again, I will personally. I mean, it's got bad here lately. I got phone calls the first few days. What is wrong with you, preacher? Why did you pray for this? If he ever prays for it to snow again, I'll shoot him. Well, I'm guilty. I prayed for it to snow. I did. I forgot to tell the Lord how much. I, I did do that. I forgot that. Now they're saying... Now they're saying it's a storm of the century. I remember one time when I was little, it snowed deeper. It snowed deeper here than that. In that last so many, several years. 22 inches one time. I remember when I was growing up uh, around here. They got more than that up in the mountains this time. But as far as a bad storm, thunder and lightning, blizzard. Uh, I saw shirts down to trade lot yesterday. They've already got them out. I survived the blizzard of 93. Great big snowflakes all over them. I was going to get me one and wear it this morning. Over my, over my tie and everything. But it, it was bad now. I ain't kidding you. It was bad. They're saying now the damage in McDowell County is estimated at $3 million. Over 200 people dead. Over close to 20 nearly just in North Carolina, died as a result of the storm that we just went through. Um, it got so bad, it got so bad where they didn't even, uh, they quit announcing what was closed. I heard one on, uh, on the radio or somewhere, it was Saturday evening, they said, don't call us with nothing else that's closed. They said, everything's closed. Call us if you're open. The only thing we're going to announce is stuff that's open. And um, it, that's when it got that gets so bad. One, they said one fella it got so bad somewhere where uh, he sent in a telegram to work. It said, um, "We'll not be in the work today. I'm not home from yesterday yet." <laughs> that's how bad it's got in a lot of places. Amen, brother. <laughs> it's rough. I ain't kidding you. As people started home, somebody told me the other day it took them three hours to get from Hickory. Uh, to Nebo, to Marion Exit, and that was just when it was getting bad Saturday morning, three hours. And uh, it's bad. People up north, life, I go up Michigan, you know, they get snow all the time. New York gets snow all the time. They say, ah, you get a little snow, and everybody, they, they have school closing and everything. And I said, hey, man, you ain't got roads that go like this. And like this. Them sideways roads is hard to drive on. And uh, that's what makes it so rough in this part of the country, them hills. Now, I want to give you a few things this morning, some thoughts that I believe God dealt with my heart about. I preached on the snow last Sunday morning. There wasn't very many of us here. I preached right down here on the floor, and we had to sit right in here, and I preached on why God lets it snow. You ever wonder why God even made snow? Why did God make snow? Why didn't He just make it all ice? I mean, He didn't have to do that. He done it for a lot of reasons, and I showed him in the scripture why he did it. This morning, I want to preach to you and tell you a few things. And the first thing I want you to do is open your Bible to Job 37. And I want to show you some scriptures just briefly for just a few minutes. And I'll say something this morning a lot of people wouldn't agree with, but it's the truth. And I want to say the first thing this morning, that God caused the storm. God caused the storm. Now, if you're a Bible believer and you believe in the sovereignty of God, you've got to admit that. God caused the storm. I've heard people say, Boy, I tell you, we had a picnic playing Saturday and the devil, he, he made it rain and, and, and he ruined our picnic. Now, you both are talking like that. According to the Bible, God's in control of the weather. God is in control of the weather. Now, I, I wouldn't argue with you this morning that sometimes God don't let the devil tinker in it a little bit. He might let the devil tinker in it once in a while, but only so far. And then God limits him as to what he can do and what he can't do. 
Now, I'm going to show you in the Bible this morning that God caused the storm. Look at Job chapter 37. Job's right before Psalms there in your Old Testament. And in Job 37, look at verse number 6. Job 37 and verse number 6. It says, For he saith to the snow, Be thou on the earth. God told that snow to fall. He talked to it. He saith to the snow, Be thou on the earth. So you say, well, the weatherman didn't think it was going to be that bad. It don't matter what the weatherman said. God says, hey, snow, get down there on the earth. And he tells how many snowflakes to fall, and he tells them where they can hit. Man, when I was watching, I turned them floodlights on Friday night. Stayed up, I stayed up about 2 o'clock in the morning just watching out the, them floodlights. And there was millions of them coming. I mean, it was just, they was coming this way and that way and this way and that way. And just falling. I thought, God has ordered that. It's what He has ordered for this time right now. They tell me, scientists say that all, there ain't no two snowflakes alike. You believe that? Now, they're the same scientists that are always fussing at us for taking stuff by faith. They say anything that shouldn't be, can't be scientifically proved, you can't believe it. That can't be scientifically proved. You can't tell me ain't no two snowflakes alive. For sure. You checked them all. The only way a man could say, I know there's no two snowflakes alive is check every one of them. Nobody's done that. Now, I don't reckon they are. They probably ain't. But I don't know they're not. So don't let scientists, but you say, well, I know the Bible too. They say, well, you can't scientifically prove that. They believe a lot of stuff they can't scientifically prove. But I tell you one thing, God ordered the snow, and He said snow fall, and that snow fell. I was up in Marion, Virginia one day, and you may believe this or you may not. I was up there in Marion, Virginia, I hadn't been preaching very long, and I they was trying to decide whether we was going to stay that evening or come home. And they saying it was going to snow and everything. Some side said it would, some said it wouldn't. And I got my Bible down and I said, dear God, show me what you want me to do. And I meant it with all my heart. I opened my Bible and I looked down and he said, he saith to the snow, be thou upon the earth. And I said, I'm getting out of town. I didn't, buddy, I got out of there and headed down this way and it come off a snow blizzard up in that part of the country. And I, you know why? Cause I believe God tells it when to snow. Turning your Bible to the book of Nahum. Nahum. Now that's way on over there to your right. What we call the minor prophets, past Daniel, past Hosea, keep going, past Amos, past Obadiah, past Jonah, keep going to your right there, past Micah, start slowing down, you'll come to the little book we call Nahum in the Old Testament. It's not too far before you get to the end of the Old Testament. The book of Nahum. Now I want to show you a verse of scripture here, book of Nahum chapter 1 and verse number 3. Nahum chapter 1 and verse number 3. We're going to do a little short Bible study here. Nahum chapter 1 and verse number 3. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord hath His way in the whirlwind and in the storm. See that? The Lord has His way. The Lord has His way in the whirlwind and the storm. And the clouds are the dust of His feet. Now, there's some other scriptures in Psalm that I won't take time to mention, but God has His way in the storm. One of the ways that God shows His power, according to that verse, is when He brings a storm on. Don't, don't you think about God when it thunders? Boy, I do. Every time that starts going, boy, I like can't, boy. And all of a sudden the earth starts, you can feel that thunder a rolling. I think, man, that's God talking. That's God just showing us how powerful He is. Men walk around sometimes like they're such big shots. We walk around like we are in the 20th century. We have arrived. We have our hospitals. We have our... God showed us last weekend just how quick He can take everything away from you just like that. Cut your lights out. Cut your water off. Just like that whenever he takes an ocean. And I want to tell you something. If it wasn't for the mercy of God, if he had decided to, he could have buried us. He could have. I mean, he could have just let her kept on a snowing, brother. They said up there and somewhere up in the mountains, there's fellas wading in snow waist deep. 
and it just a pouring down. That's when it starts getting spooky when it's like that. When it's getting to the place where you can't move, having to dig out of your house, you start saying, hey, God's in control of this, and unless He tells it to stop, it ain't going to stop. You ever thought about how powerful a force, now they call it nature now, we, we, everything they, they blame on nature is God running this universe is what it is. God tells it when to rain, God tells it when to stop raining. God tells it when to snow, God tells it when to stop snowing. God tells a hurricane to make. You say, well, I don't believe God would do that. That's, that's not the God of the liberals. No, it's not, but it's the God of the Bible. The God of the Bible hath His way in the storm. And He allows storms to come just to remind us that He's still God. He's in control. He's in charge of things. You ain't in charge of nothing. Now, they tell me that a hurricane... You ever wondered how a hurricane becomes a hurricane? They say that the water temperature in the ocean, mostly down south, has to be 80 degrees. When 80 degree water in the ocean produces a funnel of air, it starts rising up to about 50,000 feet and kind of turns like in a circle like this. Then the earth spins and when the earth spins, it's a twist on that tunnel and gets that thing a spinning. And as it spins, it sucks up water off of the, off the ocean and, and moisture and then it carries it over land and dumps it. That's where that high wind and all that water comes from. They say that them things can be 400 miles in diameter and spin around at 200 miles an hour. That's some force, brother. 400 mile diameter, 200 miles. You think you got, did you know that a hurricane the size can lift 60 million tons of water off the face of the ocean? and generates more power in 10 seconds than the entire United States of America uses electricity in one whole year. That's the power that God puts in a storm. Boy, I'll tell you this, and it come over us last weekend, there was some power in that thing, buddy. That thing was powerful. You know, what, did, what did we do to stop it? Could you build a block up there and say, we don't want snow in our town, build a bubble over it. No, sir, you can't stop it. It's unstoppable. Man cannot do it. Not only does God tell it when to start, I'm going to show you in the Bible when God tells it when to cease. Turn to Psalm 107. Psalm 107. Quickly now. Hurry, hurry with me. Psalm 107. And we'll see the Lord tells the storm when to be over. You say, oh boy, I'm glad that thing finally moved up the coast. It moved up the coast because the Lord told it to move. Psalm 107. And verse number 29. Psalm 107 and verse 29. You say, well, you're one of them preachers that believe God's responsible for all this. Yep, sure do. As I believe the Bible, and uh, I don't believe there wouldn't be Mother Nature if God hadn't created nature. Psalm 107, look at verse 29. He maketh the storm a calm, so that the waves thereof are still. Turning your Bible to Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4, the perfect illustration of this. He tells it when to start, as we saw earlier. He tells it when to cease, as He does here. Mark chapter number 4 and verse number 37. Mark chapter 4 and verse 37, the disciples were there on the ship. A great storm of wind came up. Boy, that wind's what made it scary the other day. That wind, that snow was bad, but that wind, that's what... I was out trying to uh, push my truck where I got it turned sideways. And every once in a while that wind would blow, and you couldn't see. You couldn't see. You couldn't see from here like the church. It was just, it was just like the air was white. If you turn this way, it just white out your face, man, like somebody throwing a, a, a flower or something right in your face. You had to keep your back turned toward it. We was out here pushing somebody off a hill up here. I come up here and circle the church parking lot a time or two, make sure everything was all right, and done a few donuts. And uh, uh, they, we, we, uh, we helped the guy get out up there. And buddy, if you turn your face toward that snow, it just wipes your face out, just like that. Look here what the Bible said. Verse 37 of Mark chapter 4. There arose a great storm of wind. The waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. He was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillar. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? 
And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. Isn't that something? The Lord woke up and said, Wind quit when wind laid down. Waves laid out. The wave is just a calm. He tells it when to start. He tells it when to stop. Not the National Weather Service. Not Mother Nature. God in heaven calls the storm. Now, brother, God does for several reasons. I want to say uh, quickly this morning, what does God teach us through a storm like that? That storm we had last weekend is a type and picture of things that we go through in our life. I hadn't been saved very long until I realized there were storms that I had to go through. When you first get saved, you think, well, glory to God, praise the Lord. Here I am saved, treading the pilgrim pathway on my way to heaven. Hallelujah! Everything's all right now. But God lets you go a little while and then the clouds roll up in your life. Maybe you get your feelings hurt at church or maybe something happens to really knock you off your feet or maybe you lose your job or find out you're sick or you have family problems or marriage problems or problems with your kids or something. Those are storms that you go through in your life. And God allows those storms to come just like it clouded up last weekend. Just like that snow fell. Just like it got six, six or seven degrees on, on Monday morning. Just like, brother, it cut our power off. Just like it cut our water off. God lets us do things like that in our Christian life. And I call to be to God. Lord, keep me safe till a storm passes by. Not give up and go back and live for the devil. Not give up and say, oh, well, it ain't what I thought it'd be. I'll just cash in my chip and go back out of and sin. But it's time to just, just, just to humble up and wrap a blanket around you and, 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 and huddle up, huddle up with each other and keep, and keep safe till the storm passes by. Lord have mercy. When the storm comes in life, that ain't no time to quit serving God. Many, many people, when the rough times hit them, they give up. I've seen people serve God real good till they have a tragedy happen and then just quit. That's no time to keep, ask God to keep you safe. God teaches us through the storm. I tell you, brother, He, He, he teaches us that He can change all of our plans and take everything we've got away from us in just a matter of moments. We act so secure. Brother, there's people sitting at home every Sunday for weeks and weeks. I bet you there's people in church this morning that got scared out of their wits last Sunday morning. And they said, God, if you'll let me live through this, I'll be in church next Sunday, sure as the world. God has to let something like that happen to show you that He's in control. You never know how much you depend on electricity till you ain't got it, do you? We are so geared. Uh, I, somebody give a testimony the other night. I heard them. They said, I believe everybody, if there's one thing this thing ought to teach us, everybody ought to get a kerosene heater and some lanterns and things like that and not be so dependent on the power company. That's bad, ain't it? We all are. I did, I, I'll admit this. So you how dumb we are. And I'm just admitting my dumb amenity. So you can, so you can identify me, okay? <laughs> Invented a Greek word there. Uh, you know what I've done all, all evening, Saturday evening? I went around turning light switches off and on the power off. Anybody else do that? Bunch more dummies in here, ain't you? I'd go in the room and I'd let someone say, you idiot, you. And I'd look, I went in the closet and I'd feel it around in there for some clothes. <laughs> couldn't see. And to beat it all, when I went out, I'd turn it back off. And I'd done something even dumber than that. When the first went off, I told my wife, I said, well, we'll just close our bedroom off. We'll get that electric heater and bring it up here. That's smart, ain't it? Oh, we had people talking about getting out their electric blanket. You know, I mean, then you catch yourself. Hey, that's electric. That's electric. People said, somebody said, uh, well, we're going to vacuum. And uh, and then uh, I can just take, and, and somebody told me the other day, they said, well, my wife's going in there to, Iron, and she said, well, I'll just iron that, and we'll go. And he said, you can't iron, honey. Don't have no electricity. You know what God told us? He taught, he taught us He can take everything you've got away just like that. Just with a little ice, no problem. Just with a little problem. He also taught us that He was merciful. We need to learn how to improvise. We need to learn how to do without some things. God taught us through the storm to do without some things. You know, 
uh, you lose your creativity if you got everything in, in, up before you. Boy, I tell you what, son, I, I couldn't get my truck up the hill. And I thought cold weather was over and burn up all my wood. I had some out stacked up, but it was covered with snow. And so JD let me have some wood and I got over there in his yard and got some wood and I couldn't get up the driveway. And I got up in my driveway just like this. And I was having to carry that wood up the hill. This is Saturday. So I go and get the fourth Five, four sticks of that wood, you know, and it's big old heavy pieces of wood. And I was going up through there like this, going up my driveway, and snow was up to here, and it was hitting me in the face, and then I'd fall, and, and, you know, I'd slip back out and fall, and I mean, it was getting, it was getting ridiculous. When I get to the top of the hill, I'd be just, uh, 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 like that, and I thought I was in halfway decent shape anyway. Boy, I got up there like that, and I, and a time or two, I thought, good night. It's getting crazy out here. You know, I thought about people used to do. People used to have to rough it like that. And one thing's wrong with our modern generation. I bet some of you young couples in here that, that, I bet some of you flipped your lid when your power went off. I bet some of you never let a light a lantern, a, a, a kerosene lantern. Pitiful. But God told us that He can take everything. I heard this guy tell another day, he said he's up in a snow blizzard. He's coming through there and he couldn't get home. And he said his windshield wiper just uh, went out on him. The motor or something froze up. And what my windshield wiper's done, they got big old chunks of ice on them. Had like big chunks of ice about that big. And so the windshield wiper wasn't even touching the windshield. Just a little chunk of ice and going, rrr, rrr, marking out a little streak about like that. And I was going down the road reaching out there like this. <laughs> Every few minutes I'd reach out there and do like this. But he told, he said... And what he'd done is he stopped and he was way up in the mountains trying to get in, couldn't get in, and had combat boots on and took his strings out of his combat boots. And he took, he tied, went, run, run one round that way, tied it to his windshield wiper, and run the other out the other window, tied it to his windshield wiper, and he could jerk it this way and his windshield wiper would go, hmm. He could jerk this and his windshield wiper would go like that. So he goes down the road like this and trying to drive at the same time. Lord have mercy. I, I know some people, brother, I hope don't have to drive like that in the mountains. I wouldn't want to ride with them, would you? Do you imagine trying to change gears, push your clutch in, wipe your windshield, change your gears? That'd be rough. I'll tell you something else God taught us through that storm. If God didn't teach us nothing else through the blizzard of the century, and we just went through the blizzard of the century, people. If you... How many of you in here did not lose electricity the entire time? Raise your hand. Oh, you sickening things, you. That's a shame. That's a shame. You missed the blessings. You missed the blessings. We went up and spent two nights with my aunt on the other side of town, and they're sitting there in a nice warm house, and talking about how bad it was. I said, good, Nachin's got him made here. We like to froze to death, brother. I, uh, I believe the, the night it got real cold, I was afraid my pipes would freeze. I put lanterns down underneath the sink. And I thought, well, I'll set the house fire if I do that. But I didn't want my pipes to freeze. And, I mean, it was rough there. And some people, Brother Bruce has been sick all week. All week, like with a flu, having to carry water and didn't get power till Friday. That's a storm, brother. That's a storm. God will make you appreciate that when you go through a storm like that. He'll make you appreciate some things. Tell you something God taught me through the storm. He taught me that sometimes it takes something like that to make us slow down enough to sit around and spend time with our family and our friends. We was out my aunt's other night. Mom was out there, my aunt her husband, and uh, they got talking about old times. And see, if it hadn't snowed, I'd been in Hammond, Indiana. We was going this week. Interstate's blocked. We couldn't go. and didn't, Couldn't get the car out. Didn't have no electricity or nothing, so we know we could go. But I'd have been out doing something like that. But instead, we got to sit around talking. And I found out things about my grandmother and grandpa and my great-grandmother that I never knew. They told me how my great-grandmother used to sit around the Bible all the time. They said if them girls put on makeup, Grandma would tell them she, they was going to hell. I mean, she wore two or three dresses. All the time, wore two or three dresses. I don't know why. And 
It's like that. They said they told me all about my great grandma. And we got to looking at old pictures. They got to digging out pictures. Oh my soul. You can see some stupid looking ones uh, back there this morning. But I tell you what, we had some dumber than that. Old, old things from way back. I enjoyed that. We laughed and cut up and talked. And I thought, man, it's been years since I've done this. And I got to thinking, if God hadn't let that storm come, our family wouldn't have been as close together. God lets storm come through you to draw your family close together. God lets hard times come to your life. People say, why am I having it so rough? I can't make ends meet. I can't pay my bills. We're losing everything we got. We're having problems. God lets it happen to draw you close together. Appreciate each other. Get the kids in there and just tell stories. Now it's a shame and a disgrace that it takes electricity going out for us to finally get to reading our Bibles again. But it's a truth for most people. Amen? Amen? That's right. Instead of using the TV for a babysitter and everything, we'll sit around and we'll, we'll talk about the Lord and pray with our kids. I heard one mama the other day, she said, How am I going crazy? I can't wait for school to start back. I thought, well, you know, that ain't the way people used to be. People used to have their kids all the time, brother. We're living in a time when we think we ain't out loafing somewhere. And out in the world of doing something, we'll lose our mind. We need to get back to where we can survive without this world's goods in our face all the time. The third thing, the last thing I'll mention right quickly. A storm will make you get rid of junk in your life. You find out all the things that you can do without. When you go through a storm in your life, you know what happens to people? Here, the same, here's what happens to us. We get married, we grow up, we go to college, whatever, and we think, boy, I tell you, I want that house. And there's nothing wrong about it. I think you ought to do your best and have as much as, as good as you can and all that. But what's the matter with people, American Christians, is brother, we live above our means. We get ourselves head over heels in debt. We bite off more than we can chew. We got to have that house. We say, well, in ten years I'll have it paid for. Ten, five years I'll have that car paid for. And then all we can think about is money, 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 money. Work, 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 work. Job, 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 job. And it finds us to the place where nothing else else matters and we can't have fun we can't enjoy ourselves anymore because all we can think about is that dollar to pay them bills but, and that's that's living a life of slavery we're living a life of slavery to material things in America and a storm will come along to make you realize you don't really need all that stuff in order to be happy Blows away the chaff. You know what? Them old dead trees, they started breaking like crazy the other day. Anything that was rotten, anything that was dead, when that wind hit, pow, pow. I was out here in the parking lot, you could hear them snapping back there in them woods back there. Them old dead limbs and stuff, just every, every little bit in certain parts. They sat out there at the camp, just every few seconds. Pow! You know what? God lets storms come in your life. He comes rid of that old dead wood and that old dead way. Listen, God lets a storm come to your life. God lets marriage problems come. God lets financial problems come. Physical problems come. Come so you can clean the sin and the dead weight and the joy of your life. If you won't do it on your own, He'll let a storm come along and do it. You won't get right with God on your own. God will put you on your knees by letting a storm come. I heard illustration. Uh, this, uh, these people were up in this one of these hot air balloons. And they were way up. And they kept getting higher and higher. And they kept getting higher and higher. And they were flying high and high and high. And doing a great flight. And all of a sudden they got so high up there it started getting it it cold in the atmosphere. And moisture was up there. And ice started forming on the balloon. And they said that well, they started getting worried. And ice, more and more ice started forming on that balloon. That's a picture of our lives. That, huh? You know, we get married, going to the house, get a car, going higher, 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 higher. And they said, ice started forming on that balloon. And ice started getting all around it. And they said that they got ice got so heavy on it that it started going down. And when it started going down, they started getting scared. And they said, oh no, what are we going to do? 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 And they said, we're going to have to lighten this thing. They took all kinds 
kinds of things. They took picnic baskets. They took other things. They took cameras and tripods and, and all kinds of equipment and binoculars and, and they had this and heaters and everything else. And a little bit, they'd throw something out. They said, we're going down. They'd throw something out. They said, we're going down. That thing started going down. They started getting more and more worried, more and more scared as ice formed on that balloon. It got cold. It wasn't fun anymore. They wasn't soaring. They was going down. They said, getting scared. And finally, they threw out everything in there. They said anything's better than getting killed. They just started throwing out the junk. Right and left, throwed out their heater. Throwed out everything they had. And then they said that thing finally come back down into the atmosphere. It said about that time after it got down so low that the rays of the sun started hitting on it again. And when the rays of the sun started hitting that balloon, that ice began to melt. And as that ice began to melt, brother, that thing, it, it got power and steam again and begin to rise more when they got back down where the sun could hit them again. And you know what happens to us? We get so high and mighty. We get our lives organized. We organize God right out of our lives. We got to have this. We got to have that. We got to have the other. And our forms on our marriage. And our forms on our home. And our forms on our lives. And, and we start going down. But then, brother, after you get down, you start throwing away a bunch of things you don't need. And the Son of God shines on you again and throws you up so you can soar and keep flying for Jesus Christ. God wants to do that through the storms in your life. He wants to keep you humble and keep you down where the sun can shine on you. You know why God lets storms come? God lets storms come to help you to realize that you really don't need all the things in this world that we think we need. I've heard the saying is this morning we need to depend on God more and on the government and the paycheck and things a lot less. And I'm saying this morning if you're going through a storm in your life God wants to make the sun shine on you again you'll commit it to him and just pray Lord keep me safe man oh man I have people set by oil lamps ate food out of a can read the Bible and prayed them kids up there in Michigan from Michigan that got stranded over here in the mountains that shook some people up I'll guarantee you their teacher wasn't out there saying "All right, children Praying is unconstitutional. They wasn't saying that. Don't you know there's doing some praying? Don't you know, buddy, when you can't even know, you don't even know where you're at and snows that day that you're saying, Oh God, help me get out of this mess. God let storm come to bring us down and put us back where we ought to be. Let's stand and bow our heads.